Hello everyone, this is Mumbo here, welcome back, and today we are back on the Hermitcraft server. It is episode 89, and we are over here at the Mumbo Jumbo Jungle base, ready to record another episode. Now, I am going to say something here that may surprise a lot of you, because this never, ever happens, but I've actually done some work in between episodes, can you believe it? I very rarely do things off camera, I very rarely do things in between episodes, so this is a bit different, okay? But I have built some stuff, so let's head up to the top here, and we can take a look. I don't know if this really counts, because technically, I did build it in a live stream, and I have to admit, the live stream was absolutely amazing. It was so much fun, we got a whole ton of viewers, and it was just, it was amazing, although I did sort of have to sing a little bit so that's on the internet somewhere but anyway if we turn around here you can see look at that we have got an addition to the tunnel we have got another tunnel in the base can you believe it I've been building so many tunnels recently I don't know what's going on but I have to admit I really really like the way this place looks I think it is due to the red bricks they're just so cool and with the spruce wood as well I don't know this is contesting one of my favorite rooms on the hermitcraft server built by myself I don't know what it is, it's just the fact that it looks like King's Cross train station in London. I think that might be it. It just feels very familiar. So it's really cool, and I'm glad I've managed to build it. Also, it adds another layer to the base, which is always nice. I like adding new areas to the base because, let's face it, we are running out of space down here. There's pretty much nowhere to go. Everywhere you look, there is something in the way so that we can't really branch out from this place anymore because there is just stuff everywhere so it's good that we've now moved up to another layer and that means that we can expand further out which is always very very exciting indeed so that is a very good addition to the base but as far as this episode is concerned I don't really know I haven't really got any hard set plans yet I've got a bunch of projects written out on a list and I'm just going down ticking them off so it will be one of those projects but to start off with I think definitely 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 we have to head over to the fishing town and we have to remove that monstrosity of a building because it is horrendous I've just spotted something and I'm very very nervous right now I can see a pair of little green feet and they've disappeared where has that creeper gone oh he probably fell down there yes mob defense I actually haven't seen this build for a fairly long time and bloody hell was bells it is disgusting um yeah I really don't know what I was thinking so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get to work on chopping this thing down I never want to see it again whoa I don't even I just what was going through my head when I thought that this build was a good idea? I, I cannot tell you. But anyway, I'm going to crack on taking this out and then I'll catch you guys in a little bit. I have now taken out that entire building and I have to admit, I think the world is definitely, definitely a better place. I'm not going to miss that thing in the slightest. In fact, I'm pretty happy to see it go. But anyway, what I thought we would do now is I thought we would crack on with a little bit of a project. This is a redstone based one, believe it or not. I haven't done a redstone project for a little while. My first idea was that I was going to build a 4x4 piston door, but I haven't taken a look around and just poked my eyes out a bit. It's not going to be possible. I mean, if you take a look at where the super smelter is, the pistons would have to be pretty much in line with that chest, and then the redstone lining it up would have to be in line with this minecart chest and it doesn't take a genius to work out that that isn't particularly possible I don't really fancy taking out the super smelter because it is one of the most useful things in my base So that is a bit of a shame But what I thought we would do instead is I thought we would build a 2x2 hidden trapdoor So what we'll do is we'll fold out from here and then fold back so then you get a 2x2 little door It's not quite as cool as a full-sized full-blown 4x4 piston door but I definitely think it will work. So I'm going to gather up some resources and then we'll crack on with that one. So for those of you who don't know how to build a 2x2 flush piston door, you are in for a treat, my friends, because I am now going to show everyone how to do it. If you know how to build it, then just sit back, relax. I'm just going to have a little chat while building it because I don't know about you guys, okay? I don't know how long you lot have been working with redstone, but I remember way back in the day, these little doors used to be so complicated. There used to be redstone everywhere. You'd have to have tons of repeaters, everything, loads of different timing circuits and things. And just looking back, 
just just looking back at old redstone it does make me laugh because we used to have the largest contraptions for what are now considered fairly simple tasks for example the 3x3 piston door you would take up sort of like 60 blocks squared to do that sort of thing and you know what i'm gonna say this right now i sort of miss that i really do miss the the lack of pressure that is put on compactness and speed and resource lightness I do kind of miss just going into a giant area of open space and building to try and make something fairly simple not caring about how compact it is or making the circuit really tight I do sort of miss that because it was quite fun but I guess you could also say that there has to be at least some form of progression and the only logical progression there is in redstone is making things more efficient making them more compact so it definitely makes sense but I do, I do miss just going into giant open worlds and building something for the fun of it. But anyway, if we give this a tester, you can see that this is working absolutely fine. Everything is all in sync and it is looking good. So that is the 2x2 two two hidden, hidden piston door there that we've got in that wall. And now all I have to do is link it up to this little button because we're going to be using a button. I prefer buttons to levers and then we can open it from the other side as well. So it's a bit of a win-win and I will do that. I think I'll do that off camera because it's not particularly exciting. So I'll crack on with this and then I'll see you guys in a couple of seconds. I've been doing a little bit of clearing here ready for what is going to be going in this room and I think you lot are really gonna like this, okay? So, in 1.8, I don't know if you guys know this, but when you silk touch a mushroom, instead of getting the sort of brownish block that you usually get currently, you actually get the block that you have just silk touched, and that means that you can get spotty blocks. Now, I want me a little bit of spotty block action. I can't wait to build things out of polka dots. I think it'll be really, really cool. So that is why, right now, we are going to be building a mushroom farm, okay? And we're building a specific room for it, believe it or not. And can you guess what that room is going to be called? The Mush Room. <laughs> it's so cheesy. It really is so cheesy and I probably shouldn't giggle at it because it means that I probably have a mental age of like 11. Anyone above the age of 11, if you laughed at that, please let me know down in the comment section. But I definitely think that is the best name for this wondrous little room that we are going to be building. It is going to be housing the mushroom farm. And I just want to say that we are going to be using Exuma's design for the mushroom farm. Or at least a little modified, slightly more automatic version of it. He uploaded it today and if you haven't seen it, I will highly suggest checking it out. I will hopefully remember to put a link down in the description. If not, then please let me know down in the comment section and I will get right on with it. But that is what we are going to be doing and I think it will be a really cool project. The room is now all cleared out. We have got ourselves a very large area and you may be wondering, why on earth is it so big? Well, here's the problem. I have based my entire base, the entirety of my base, is even okay i've got two blocks wide instead of the one block wide it was stupid it was a schoolboy error on my part right in the beginning when i first started building it but obviously i'm not going to do anything about it now so instead of having just one automatic mushroom farm we're gonna have one and a two yeah we're gonna have two of them so it's not necessarily a bad thing, it means we've got twice as much to do, and also twice as much mushroom, which means twice as much polka dot madness. And I, for one, am all for that. So what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to hop into a redstone testing world, and try and come up with the automatic-ish mushroom farm design, and we'll see what I can manage to do. It should be quite interesting. So this is the little design that I have come up with, and I'm actually fairly proud of this. I've been working on it for the past 10 or 15 minutes, so let's take a look at it. All we have to do, head down here, plant our mushroom. It is dark enough down there for us to plant it, and then we just flick this lever, and you can see that, whoa, we just got ourselves an absolutely almighty mushroom there, but that is that. And as you can see, we've got a rapid-firing dispenser for the bone meal, and that is what makes these mushrooms grow, and it seems to work pretty nicely. So then all you have to do is flick the lever once again, let's try this with the red mushroom, and then it gets bone mealed, and we get ourselves a sweet, giant red mushroom, all working very nicely indeed. I'm just working on how I want this room to look, and it is proving to be extremely difficult. Once again, I want to stay away from stone bricks and things just because I fancy staying away from stone bricks, and I thought I would once again drop into the whole acacia wood thing because I really like acacia wood, but right now I am struggling just a little bit. 
I'm having a bit of trouble. This is a much larger scale room than any room that I've worked on recently. And that means I've got a lot more to think about and I can't just have big flat walls like what I'm basically doing right now. So, hmm, I'm having some building troubles and it's not the first time as you can quite clearly see. I think what I'll have to do is I'll just have to keep messing about. Placing blocks where blocks need to be placed. In the corners here we're going to have spruce wood pillars. They're going to go up so maybe I need to use a little bit more spruce wood in and about the place. But it's quite tough. It is quite difficult to do and I'm trying to work out what on earth I want this place to even look like. So it's going to be interesting to see what this ends up being. The old mushroom. I've finished up all the sides of the room, so let's turn around, you can see a little sneak preview in there, you can clearly see that I've stuck with the acacia wood, which is good, you know, it's nice to have a little bit of brightness about the place, because one popular comment of mine that always seems to come up in all my videos is that it's all a bit boring, isn't it? It's all a bit boring on this level. This is like the fun level where things begin to heat up a bit and then at the end of the room, of course, we have got ourselves quite a big, quite a bright, very, very different looking room to the rest of my base once again. It's quite decorative, I would say. I don't know if I like it. I, I, I do like it, I think. I don't know if you like it, that's the thing. I like it, okay? I've been looking at this for the past 10-15 minutes and I've concluded in my brain that I like it. But it's up to you guys. Do you like it? Because I make these videos for you. And if you don't like it, then we've got ourselves a bit of a problem on our hands. But I'd say this looks quite nice. Obviously there is still the roof and the ceiling, the roof and the floor to do even, which they need to be done. And of course that will add something else to the room that make it, might make it look better, might make it look worse. And of course we also have to add in the machines that are going to be doing the mushroom in because obviously that is the whole purpose of this room. It's not just here to look pretty, okay? So... I think I'm going to just keep working on it. I'm fairly happy with the sides here. I need to come up with a design for the floor and the ceiling because I have absolutely no idea for those. I was originally considering mycelium, but I don't think that's going to work. Do you? Purple and orange? Is that a match made in heaven? I can't imagine it is. So, yeah, I'm going to have to do some thinking, get my thinking cap on. But for the minute, I would say this looks okay. And I was doing so well. That is it. The room, the room is complete. It is done, finito, and I think it looks good. Okay, of course I did eventually just drop in and I decided to use stone brick because I couldn't think of anything else to use in the ceiling. I was considering doing half slabs, but then they're light and it makes the room look a little bit smaller. And also we've got a lot of half slabs already, so I thought, you know what, sod it. I'm just going to use stone bricks, it will look good. And in my defence, I would say it does look pretty good, especially coupled with this spruce wood here. I would say it looks nice, and all in all, this whole room... I would say is done. I think it looks good. I hope you think it looks good. I did actually just record a clip of me doing all the blocks for the ceiling and it was a lot of doing this and not a whole lot of talking. And I felt a bit bad because if anyone was watching that on an Oculus Rift, they would probably be sick everywhere. Or if anyone is watching it on a fairly large TV, once again, it would have the same outcome. They would be sick everywhere. So I decided to delete that clip, scrap the footage, and just do one of these little progress updates. I have been trying recently to do a little bit more on camera because I think it's a little bit more interesting to watch. Otherwise, it can feel like a little bit of a slideshow, if you know what I mean. So if you do want to see a little bit more on-camera work, then please let me know. There's a lot of things that you need to put down in the comment section in today's episode, but please do let me know. It is all going to help out in future videos. But anyway, now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do the mushroom machines, the little automated things that I built in the testing world. I will probably take you through how to build one of them in case you want to do it yourself, because they are pretty cool. I can see you in there, Mr. Creeper. You're not hiding from anyone, especially not me. So I've already built the other side, so I roughly know what I am doing here. So let's give it a bash on the other side. So we want this to be perfectly symmetrical from both sides. So we are going to line it up with this tree trunk here. And then we need a block like that with the half slabs there. And then in the middle, we're going to need our dirt block. And actually, I need to chuck that in on the other side as well. Because otherwise, we aren't going to be planting very many mushrooms, are we? So there we go. That's quite easy. That's fairly self-explanatory. Then out the back, we need ourselves a dispenser right there. 
That's going to be dispensing all of the bone meal. And then we're going to go up a block each time here. Nice and easy. This is actually quite an, a self-explanatory little design. And then we need all of the blocks up like this. Uh, block out like that with the sticky piston facing inwards. And then I'm going to put a block of cobblestone on the front of this one. Just because I want to be able to differentiate that block from the rest. Because that is the block that is going to be moving in front of this. So then all we need to do in terms of redstone stuff is we obviously need a block up like that. And then we'll just carry all of these blocks upwards like this. Uh, we need to grab ourselves a lever so that we can actually extend the piston and also turn on the rest of the mechanism. So that is the darkness thing. You can see that this now goes very dark and that means that we can plant mushrooms, which is really helpful, obviously. Otherwise, once again, we aren't going to be planting very many mushrooms. And then out the back here, we need to grab ourselves a repeater and that's going to be on a half slab to stop it from powering the piston. So that's repeater. And it runs into a block. And then we need another block down on the bottom here. Redstone dust on top of that. Take out this block and place a redstone torch. And then we should see that we get like a flashing, flashing redstone clock thing. So that's pretty good. That means that we're going to have a rapid firing dispenser. And one thing that I want to say about rapid firing dispensers is that they don't actually fire any bone meal unless there is something in front of it, which is really useful because that means you don't just fly through your bone meal. So now you can see that that is actually working. And if we place in some bone meal into this dispenser, you can see that it isn't actually going down, even though the particle effect is there, until we plant something in front of it. Now, obviously, I'm not going to plant anything because all I've got is trees, and I don't want to fill this place with trees. But those are the two machines all done and dusted. So we've got both of the mushroom dis machines here. That is the redstone clock turned off, so we shouldn't have any lag. So basically... That is it. Now all we have to do is go out, get some mushrooms, and we'll be able to start planting and gathering some up. It is now fill up time. Let's give this a tester. I have got a handful, a small little handful of mushrooms. I suppose we should probably put some chests up in the room for mushroom storage. Otherwise, we're going to have them all over the place. But I'm going to chuck some bone meal into all of the dispensers. I can't remember which side it is on. Good. We chose the correct one, so in each of the dispensers I'm going to put 9 stacks of bone meal, that is definitely going to be more than enough. We probably never will use all of that bone meal, but it is good to have it, so let's chuck all of that in there, that's that one full. And we still have a little bit left over, that's probably just because I put some in earlier, so then we just need the other, other 9 stacks. And there it is, so those are all the dispensers filled, now it is time for the moment of truth. Right, let's try it out first with the brown mushroom. I don't know if this room is going to be tall enough. That's one thing that I've just realized. So I suppose all we can do is plant the mushroom. We managed to plant the mushroom, that's good. Flick the lever and yes, we've got a mushroom. It's filled the room. That is awesome. Oh, would you look at that? I've just slightly broken the mechanism a little bit there, but that is perfect. Alright, well I'm just going to take this whole thing down. I can't remember if fortune affects it. I suppose it probably does. And I do want tons and tons of mushrooms. So this is wicked. I'm so happy. Now time to test out the red side. Let's see if this is just as successful. We've managed to plant it. That's always a good sign. Flick the lever and... Uh, it does use a lot of bone meal, doesn't it? But boom! There we go. Let's take a look. Oh no! Oh no! Our mushrooms deleted the piston! <laughs> no! Oh, how frustrating! Well, I don't know what to say about that. I do not know what to say about that. Oh, what do we do? What do we do? Well, I mean, it worked once. I suppose if we have mycelium, that removes the need for the piston. That would be a good solution to the problem. But you know what? I don't think I'm going to fix it in today's episode. Because what I want to do is, once again, I want you to head down to the comment section and let me know a good way to solve that without having to use mycelium. Because mycelium means that, well, it's just it's not as exciting, okay? I like the fact that we had to make it dark for this to happen. And also, when the big mushroom grows, 
obviously it will cover over the mycelium and that means that it will it will die it will turn to dirt and that means that we can't use it again so that's not really a solution oh that's such a shame i was so excited when that original one works at least the brown mushrooms they definitely work look let's do that again let's bring back the excitement let's see it is using a lot of bone meal but there we go big big old mushroom i'm glad about that oh it's breaking everything oh no my my mushroom is dismantling itself as we do it maybe this wasn't the best idea but anyway i hope that you have enjoyed today's episode i really have enjoyed recording it even if it hasn't strictly gone to plan but if you did enjoy it please be sure to hit that like button and if you really loved it then make sure to subscribe but thanks for watching guys this has been mumbo and i'm out i'll see you later